after quitting drugs and alcohol, how do I avoid bad habits such as excessive sugar, caffeine, et cetera? Okay, so, so this is a good question. And I know for me, once I got clean and sober, I moved over to sugar. I mean, alcohol is sugar. So when I quit drinking, I started eating mean, cake, pie, ice cream, uh, jelly beans, Jolly Ranchers, like whatever I could get my hands on. That was, that was what I went over. And, and I started drinking a lot of coffee. I started drinking a pot of coffee every single day. And that was how to get my day started. So I don't know. I mean, excessive sugar is not good for you. And I, I mean, I, I gained like 20 pounds when I first got clean and sober and because I, I ate like shit and, and Hey, that happens to a lot. And a lot of people that get clean and sober, they're severely underweight. So if you're smoking crack and doing meth and you weigh a hundred pounds and you're five eleven, I mean, you, you probably need to gain some weight. So I think that the excessive sugar would be the least of your worries and the excessive caffeine is kind of the least of your worries really. I mean, Hey, caffeine, sugar, cake, pie, ice cream, Jolly Ranchers, cigarettes, even I don't smoke cigarettes. Actually I kicked, I had a nicotine habit from when I was 19 years old, all the way until I was about until I got sober and I got sober at 35. So I quit nicotine about a month after I got clean and sober. So that was what I did. And I'm and nicotine is not something that I would do, but Hey, there's a lot of people that are clean and sober and nicotine is the only thing they have left. They feel like nicotine is the only thing they have left. So they still smoke and they eat lots of candy and sugar and pie. And, and Hey, eventually like for me, once I, I real I like okay, I added I, I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be fit. I wanted to I wanted to take care of myself. And so more than anything, it's taking care of myself. And that's why I exercise on a daily basis. That's why I don't eat processed foods. That's why I cut down on the sugar as much as I possibly I don't eat processed sugar. I don't eat processed foods. I eat whole foods as often as I possibly can. I stay away from nicotine. So these are all things that I do to take care of myself because I want to feel good. Like I want to feel good. Alcohol, drugs made me feel like shit. Eating and occasionally I love nothing but cake. And so I'll eat, I mean, it's like you bust out of nothing but cake. I mean, next thing you know, I'm eating the whole freaking thing and I feel literally feel hung over the next day. I don't feel good. So every once in a while I go back and I'll try it out. I mean, last night I had some pie from Pie Snob, which is amazing. The apple pie from Pie Snob is awesome. But I only had one piece. So I kind of controlled myself. So that was good. So avoiding other bad habits, I would say, you know, I actually read something this morning from Joe Polish's new book, What's In It For Them. And he said, there are no such thing as bad habits. There are only habits that lead to bad results. And I've never thought about that before, but I, I think it's okay. If we look at it that way, there's no such thing as a bad, I'm not a bad person and I don't do, I don't have bad habits. I just have habits that lead to bad results. So I want to stick with the habits that lead to good results. And so that's why I do all the things that I do. That's why I exercise on a regular basis. I surround myself with healthy people. I pray, I meditate, I do breath work. I go to the infrared sauna. I do an ice bath. I go to optimize. I love optimize because optimize is focused on recovery and wellness. And the people that go to optimize are focused on wellness and taking care of themselves. And so it's not just fitness, it's recovery. My good friend, Larry Arnold, I saw him yesterday and he's focused on recovery. And a lot of times, especially the alcoholic and the addict that is, that goes all out because I go all out. And when I'm all out on, you know, doing Ironman a couple of times, I mean, that's all out and doing F45. I mean, all of the things that I do, I go all out and that's how alcoholics and addicts typically are. That's our, that's in our, it's in our DNA to go a hundred percent. So 
going a hundred percent on the things that are good for us is not a bad thing in my opinion and in my experience. And I know that I need to go all in on recovery, which means the rolling, the stretching, the ice bath, the infrared sauna, the breath work, all the other things. And actually NAD plus is something that is not talked about a lot, but NAD plus is for longevity health purposes. But recently they just started talking about NAD health for addiction recovery, specifically opiate recovery, because the receptors and you actually, I'm not even going to try to explain it because it's way, it's way over my head, but stay tuned for NAD plus and addiction recovery. I actually am going to get someone on my podcast to talk about that because it's a big thing and NAD plus is very helpful.